Hello, New Jersey. This is John Insulin, welcoming you to another edition of On the Record. So how do you make a feature film for $5,000? Very carefully, it would seem. As you'll hear in a moment from director Jamie Insulaco, it helps to have your own digital high-definition video camera, some friends from college in the cast, and use your own home as the set. He also served as a one-man crew, writing the script, gathering props, doing the lighting and photography, and financing the movie. In Sulaco, a Maywood resident, spoke with me Friday about his first film, a comedy called Will Reading, about a group of people who gather for the reading of a will. Here's my interview with In Sulaco. Jamie In Sulaco, welcome to On the Record. Thanks, John. You are the director and creator of a film that's going to have its premiere in Bergen County next week called Will Reading. Tell us a little bit about the film. Well, the movie uh, all takes place in one location, in one house, and all of these characters are coming together after uh, the passing of one of their friends, and they believe he might have left some money behind, and all of them have different needs uh, to get their finances into a better spot, and, and they're hoping that they can find it somewhere hidden in the house. Okay, great. Is this film classified as a comedy? Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. And uh, you filmed it for about $5,000. Tell us how you did that. Well, uh, I think the the first uh, thing you'll come across is if uh, you can find a way to film your movie in a place where you don't have to pay for the location. That's a huge plus. So I was able to do that filming at my house. Um, you can get a uh, high quality high definition high definition image for a reasonable price these days a big jump from even 10 or 15 years ago um of course we don't use film anymore that alleviates a lot of costs mm-hmm. uh you know led lights are certainly much cheaper than traditional film lights uh mm-hmm. and you know there's lots of other savings to be had uh, in the lighting department um but just generally technology is just brought the cost down so much that it's really at everybody's fingertips and even from at least a picture perspective and pretty much everybody's pocket, even though you're not going to get great sound off your phone, you can get a pretty impressive image off a modern cell phone. Sure. No, I've found that myself. Um, And what did you shoot it with, just to get a little technical? Uh, I shot it on uh, the Canon uh, XA25, I believe it is. Uh, Mm -hmm. And uh, we shot at uh, 30 frames, um, just because that's what I'm used to and the most comfortable with, mm-hmm. and uh, at just the you know traditional 1920 by 1080 full HD frame. Um, you know there are other options are available in in that particular camera, but um, I'm not quite used to shooting with 60 frames or 24 frames, mm-hmm. and uh, my camera does not shoot uh, 4K, which is very, we're all very slowly crawling toward 4K, uh, but mm-hmm. I, I'm not quite there yet myself. Okay, great. Um, what what were your expenses? What what, what constituted most of the five thousand uh, dollars? The camera. I, I did buy this camera. Uh, that was um, just over two thousand. Um, I tried to be careful while I was writing, but I I did find myself uh, buying props. Uh, I kept writing in uh, lots of fake flowers, uh, just just little odds and ends. You know, I kept finding, oh, I need this, so I need that. Just so you know, a little thing. One of my characters has a cane, so I had to buy a cane. Lots of little things, uh, little tiny bits of makeup, just a, a few extra costume pieces. Although uh, the actors were generally very generous, not only with their time, but uh, mm-hmm. generally wearing their own clothes too. Okay, good. Tell me a little bit about your cast. Uh, well, uh, Dan Conrad and Greg Borup and Mark Seidenstein uh, were all people I went to college with. Uh, so we all knew each other from there, and I'd, I'd seen them all uh, perform in various different roles on stage, and uh, they've done some other uh, short films together. And uh, I thought that they would be perfect choices for me, but uh, our lead uh, with Katie Weigel, um, I did not know uh, 
that actually was a recommendation from uh, Dan's wife, and uh, that that really worked out. Um, it's just at a point where I, I uh, thought I had a line on an actress to play that role, and it didn't work out, and I was just getting to the point where I was wondering if we were ever going to be able to start and find somebody to play this mm-hmm. role. But mm-hmm. uh, And she's almost on screen for almost the entire movie, but she just makes it look effortless. It really worked sure. out beyond my expectations with everybody. Okay. She's obviously a crucial character. Tell me a bit about the role she played. Uh, well, uh, Katie plays uh, Wendy. Uh, Wendy's husband has recently passed, and she finds herself in this difficult situation where she has a daughter to care for and uh, is also currently out of work, so she's really struggling to make ends meet. Uh, So that's really her her primary focus is, you know, how am I going to move forward every single day to keep a roof over my daughter's head and just keep, keep our lives together. Mm-hmm. Um, you shot it in Maywood, in your house in Maywood, right? That's right. All right, so definitely a Bergen County-made movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, we all at least went to school in Bergen County. Most of us still live in Bergen County now. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, if somebody wants to see your film but um, is unable to make the free screening uh, Wednesday at Bergen Community, what are their options? Well, uh, we're going to be pushing it out on to uh, some on-demand services uh, in the next few months. Um, you can also contact us uh, through willreadingmovie.com, and uh, we can get you a screener DVD or access to the private link online. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, eventually, uh, we're hoping to provide it on these various streaming services, as well as to hopefully have a a Blu-ray, which will also have a short documentary that will kind of give you a more inside look as to not only how this film was made, but how you can do it yourself. Okay. Are you thinking of taking it on the festival circuit? Uh, We have uh, applied to some festivals, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot like applying to college. You know, you fill out an application, you send them a little bit of money, and you wait to hear back. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is this your first film? This is my first feature, yes. All right. What gave you the inspiration for the? I mean, because it sounds like you not only directed it, but wrote it. What What gave you the inspiration for this film? Well, uh, I've been fooling around with uh, video cameras for uh, a long while now, and I, I have made a few shorts, and uh, I've, uh, I have a movie review show on YouTube. Uh, called Quick Review, so I'm always fiddling around with my cameras and my lights and my microphones and having a good time. But I, I knew I wanted to f- make a feature, um, and I, I really enjoy writing. Uh, that's that's probably my my favorite part of this aspect of, of the aspect of putting a movie together, besides editing the finished video. Um, and I just knew I wanted to tell a big, complete story. Um, it just you know just one of those things I always wanted to do, uh, and I, I just thought. Um, if I didn't do it now, maybe I'd never do it. And I'm really glad I did it, and I hope I get to do it again someday. Okay. Who are the film ins- uh, filmmakers whom you look up to who uh, inspired you? Oh, boy. Uh, so, so many. Um, I, I've really recently been gravitating toward uh, the Coen Brothers older movies. Um, and, of course, New Jersey's Kevin Smith is always somebody that showed you particularly earlier in his career, that you could do a lot with a little bit. Uh, and, you know, his movies were so dialogue-heavy focused that, you know, you don't have to make a big, big bright, shiny movie. But I, I sure do love my big, giant Martin Scorsese movies and uh, Oliver Stone. And, I, oh, I, I, I can hardly point to a filmmaker I don't like. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Um, I've read a lot of stories about independent filmmakers basically financing their films on their credit card. Is that the route that you went? It is, um, but at $5,000, uh, you know, it's 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 not quite as difficult as it used to be, uh, even a movie like Clerks, which is a very simple movie uh, shot here in New Jersey, uh, all on credit cards for, I think, about $25,000. Obviously, that that's a lot more 
money mm-hmm. than we spent uh, because just because of the way technology was in the 1990s, you had to really shoot on film to get a high quality image. And because that's not the case anymore, it's, it's, it's much cheaper now. Sure. Now that you've got this first film under your belt, do you have plans for others? I do have a plan for another movie. Uh, it's a bit more ambitious, and I, I am hoping I, I made this movie without a crew, uh, so uh, I would kind of be constantly kind of running around. Uh, there were points where we were shooting during the winter, and everybody, you know, it would be cold out, and not that we were really outside very much, but I would be usually in shorts and be sweating, and I'd, you know, run over and talk to the actors, and I'd move the lights for the next shot and move the camera and just get everything set up again and kind of wipe my brow and, you know, get get everything moving again. Um, so I'm hoping that the next movie I make, uh, I, I'd like to move on both in scope and this movie is Will Reading as a comedy, and uh, I think next I'd like to do something uh, that is a little bit more dramatic and maybe has a more polished look and has a leap forward for me technically. Mm-hmm. Okay. And with a crew. <laughs> right, right. And uh, how long did it take you to shoot this film? Well, uh, we shot on and off. Uh, I think uh, I found that I was not physically able to shoot. And, and, you know, I was working, you know, a regular job nine to five during the day. And we were shooting at night for three or four or five hours at a time. Uh, usually only two nights a week. And, uh, we lost Katie to another show for a month, uh, and you know just different things would come up when we break for the holidays. So we probably shot on and off for over a year and a half, and I think from when I started writing to uh, whenever I finished editing, that was probably a period of maybe three and a half years. So it's it's been a long haul, but but I'm I'm just about near the end. All right, Jamie. And uh, I understand you and the cast will be available for a Q&A session after the screening? That's right. Uh, we'll be there. Uh, we can answer uh, all sorts of different questions uh, from whether it's performance-based to technical. Uh, I think we'll have you covered. All right. Well, Jamie, thanks again for being our guest today on, on the record. Thank you very much. I really appreciate being here today.